Hey guys, we are back again on Tuesday. Molly and I are coming to you today. Molly's going to run the show. We are going to be talking about content, um, really like what you want to say or what you think you're saying versus what you're really saying. Um, and this is why may, maybe some of you are not getting the traction or the comments or the engagement you want. And uh, Molly, I'd love for you to introduce yourself again to my audience. We're, we're sharing audiences and um, introduce yourself, tell everyone about you. And then we are actually auditing accounts today, profiles that some people commented they would like for us to do. So I'm excited to do this today. Awesome. So I'm Molly Morocco. Um, I'm a business coach and brand messaging strategist, and I help pick people to figure out what to say and do online so that they can make more money. Um, and so I'm really excited to be collaborating with Randy. As she said, we're going to look at a couple of accounts and I'm going to go through them and look at kind of their Instagram, their bio, what they're saying, who they're talking to, what content seems to be doing well, what other types of content might be doing well, if they wanted to add some things in. And we're just going to kind of look at all of that. Brandy, why don't you introduce yourself while I figure out how to present um, the screen so we can take a look. Awesome. Yeah. So we're going to hopefully actually show you guys the screen. So for those of you that are here, most of you do know, um, I have pivoted a lot since we were going live before a couple of years ago. And now I'm your go-to girl for systems. I realized in my own business, my own failures early on that you guys have got to have these systems going. So we want to, all the things that you could delegate, all the things that you could automate specifically. And we just give you back a lot of time and freedom with that. So for instance, the things that we're talking about today, we're going to be looking at your messaging. Some of you are spending so much time on your content creation, on your messaging, what to say, when to say it, how to say it. Molly is a genius at this. I love hearing her when she does these audits. You are going to get a lot out of this. Um, and once again, if this is something you want us to do with you one-on-one, -on -one, as you can see on the bottom, comment VIP, and we'll actually set up a time to work with you one-on-one -on -one for four to six hours on whatever it is that you want to diagnose, scale, or grow in your business. So Molly, you got, you got everything pulled up? Yes. Can you see it? I cannot see it. You just oh, see wait, it. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's, let's add it in. I got it now. Hold on. <laughs> Like, I'm like, you, so you're getting all fancy today, getting all fancy, fancy. Okay. So um, everyone should be able to see that. I may flip the screens back and forth so everyone can get a little bit of a better view. Um, yeah. So I'll let you jump in for, uh, yeah, for Dr. Mich Michelle. Okay, cool. So today we're going to look at Dr. Michelle. So she's a certified wealth coach. Um, and so just at looking at her account so far in terms of her bio, so I help burnt out women achieve financial abundance. When I read that statement, immediately I have a question and I'm like, how, how do you do that? Is it like through coaching? Is it through information? Is it through courses? Like, how is she doing that? Um, so thinking about when you have that kind of like elevator pitch your you know statement that's basically explaining to people who you are what you do and how you can help them just make sure that that how piece is in there obviously as we read a little bit further she's a podcast host army vet author minister mom financial uh the financial archetype quizzes that's what the link is for there so in looking at that i would just kind of take that first statement and kind of add the how to it just so it's really clear how you are helping people and how they work with you. Because again, are you just someone on Instagram that they can just go and take all the free information from? And there's kind of nothing on the other side of that for them to have to invest in or want to buy or ways to work with you. So just make that super clear um, in your bio. Next thing is your feed is beautiful, which I'm like one coming from wedding world. I'm, you know, I love a pretty feed and her feed is really, really pretty. The only thing that I would kind of add to that in terms of her visual brand being really solid, I would love to kind of maybe take away some of the busyness. So in having so many different kind of beautiful visual options, um, having some more simple ones in there just to balance it out so that your eye can go through the feed and kind of catch on to something. Because when I go through the feed, what catches my eye is her face down here, her face over here, those kind of things. Some of the other things, because there's so many like really visually interesting photos together, they start to blur a little bit. So the more that we can kind of like streamline or break it up with her face or pictures of her in the feed, I think that's going to help kind of 
help people see what they need to see to find the information that they want to find. Like it's going to be able to pull people in more quickly with the beautiful visuals if there's something in there breaking them up. So let's get into actually her content. So when I went through her reels and tried to look at which ones were really doing well, there were a couple um, where she's praying in the car and those ones actually seem to do really well. This is one of them. Woo, you know, off the volume there. Um, so this one, you can see there's a ton of comments on this one. There's a ton of likes, 150 likes down there. So if we're looking at that and we're saying, okay, this is the type of content that's actually really resonating with people, how can we do more of this? But this is going to be a little bit adjacent to kind of like the wealth content and the money content. So how can we connect those two in a way that people are kind of like, oh, okay. Because one of the things that I've been talking about a lot lately is what makes a really magnetic brand is someone who takes something. So in this case for Dr. Michelle, it would be wealth or money coaching. And then they layer it with different aspects of their personality. So, you know, her Christianity, her faith, things like that, and kind of layering those two things together in a really unique way. That is like when you create a brand that people are like, oh my gosh, I cannot get enough of this woman. She's amazing. I need to work with her. So that I would love to kind of work with her to, to come up with a really, um, clear way to connect those two things. Because again, in looking at her content, I see like, here's another one that this is something again, a bunch of comments, things like that, a lot of engagement, you know, 182 likes. So how can we kind of take these two concepts and meld them together in a way that's really cool and unique to her and is going to bring people in. Now, the other thing and going back and looking at her content and looking at, we'll go back over to posts. So, and I know that she has some carousel posts within her feed just from going and looking at it. Um, I think carousel posts are a great way to show listicles, basically. So a list of, you know, different information that's kind of like an article, it's a listicle. So I know, again, that she has some of these in her feed, but I think that especially when you have something like this, it almost looks like the cover photo of one of those carousels. So I would consider doing more of those and even potentially like putting her face in some of the imagery to pull people in because faces are going to pull people in. There's, there is something that happens when you have really beautiful branded stuff is that it can feel a little bit too removed and a little bit too corporate and so people will feel like it's almost selling to them. So I would love to see more like humanity, humanness and Michelle's face in these um, images because that's what's going to make it feel personal to her and personal to her brand and who she is. So that was just my my thought on that. Um, I think seeing her face will definitely help now. And kind of going through and looking at, you know, the captions um, on her different posts. One of the things in terms of her messaging that I would really love to add and get clear on is I don't see any emotion. Like I don't see any emotional connection. I see lots and lots of value, which is amazing. Um, and lots of lots of like factual information. But I'm just not seeing like that deep emotion or that deep empathy of connecting with her audience. So if I'm someone who wants to potentially work with her or is drawn to this content, one of the things that's really going to pull me in is feeling like, oh my gosh, this person understands exactly where I am, exactly what I'm struggling with, how I'm feeling. And, you know, I feel a lot of like connection, a lot of empathy from this person. Therefore, I want to work with them. So that's the piece for me on, you know, um, the messaging standpoint where I don't see a super strong message in terms of the um, what's being said in the captions and, you know, some of the reels and things like that. So I would love to get clear on what her brand message is so that she can start to infuse this into her content because that's what's going to make people really want to work with her. Um, 
And this post in particular, she has her um, tagline here. So I help financially frustrated people navigate their wealth building journey, realize that abundance is at their fingertips and build generational wealth. So I would want to take that tagline and I would want to kind of simplify it in a way that would make sense to, you know, a middle schooler or even a high schooler. So financially frustrated people, like what does that look like? Is that I help people who live paycheck to paycheck? Is that I help people who can't pay their bills? I help people who can't seem to get ahead. Like taking the message that you have and putting it in its simplest possible terms in a way that describes the actual situation of the person is what's going to help them identify themselves in that messaging. So I would just update that a little bit and then navigate their wealth building journey, realize that abundance is at their fingertips. Um, You know, you can simplify that to I help people, you know, save for the future. Um, I help people find money easily. I help people save more easily. I help people build wealth their kids can enjoy. So again, you're taking what what your tagline is and you're kind of boiling it down to the simplest and kind of uh, most easy to grasp, like easy to relate to um, level. So I think, and a lot of people make that mistake with taglines where they kind of have like, you know, everyone feels like they're Nike and they can say, oh, my taglines just do it, but nobody knows what that means. And you can't have a tagline like that if you're not Nike. So just a thought there. Um, Brandy, I'll let you jump in. Cause I just, I just went to town on that. <laughs> no, I love, and of course I love, this is your jam. I want to say um, hello really quick to Nikki. Um, she literally just took the longest flight ever from uh, JFK to Singapore. She's in Bali. She says hi from Bali. And I want to make sure that we said hello. Um, And I believe she actually um, offered up her profile for us to look at too. If we do not get to your profiles today um, for audit, reach out to us. We may continue to do some of these and pre-record them, but use yours as um, our content. And so long as you give us permission to do that, we can still we can still do that for you. I think the only thing that I would add, I loved everything you said. Two things for me, um, and this is not for everyone, but once again, you noticing that when she does the just raw phone in her face, didn't go into this big production, she's doing the prayer, she's talking to everyone, she's getting the engagement. Um, I would do the same thing when you were mentioning the kind of the listicle carousel. Um, I would create a series, and you know, we want our reels and our TikToks and things to be super short. So maybe where I would go that messaging would reach a lot further is if she took those seven points and she's like, Hey guys, for the next seven days, I'm going to do a series. I'm going to pop on and give you one a day. It's going to be really quick. Number one, it keeps people coming back to your profile. So they'll keep coming back to check and see what you're doing. Um, So anytime in your mind, you're thinking about five tips or 10 tips or a list of this, think about breaking it down into a short video series Put it up into your highlight section on Instagram, Uh, put it into a, uh, I forgot what they're called on TikTok now, but you have like saved areas where you can put your series in there. Um, But think about it. You could do it on your YouTube. You could do it on your Facebook. But I would, that was the only thing I would add is A, that message will be clear. You're only giving one tip at a time. They have time to absorb it, ask you questions, get engagement. And then you could ask, you know, hey, what do you want me to do my next series on? Um, and then I really love that you pointed out too that like who, who exactly does she want to help? Um, I've kind of gotten away from is there necessarily a niche? Like you know when you're sitting down, you could be talking to a specific person. That doesn't mean you can't help other people. Just make sure that when you're ta- when you're creating your pose, you know who you're talking to. If you were literally at a table drinking a cup of coffee and you were helping one person, who who is that? And so that's, that's who I, what I would address in the post. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And on TikTok, so she could add that to her playlist. And it's funny playlist. because I actually, someone on TikTok is doing like a 30 day challenge. And so the first day, like I watched it and I didn't even, um, I didn't comment, but I did, I did like it. And now every day TikTok knows that I liked and engaged with that, like, 30 day challenge for blah, blah, blah. And so now I'm getting her videos every single day. And all I've done is like, I haven't saved any of them. I haven't commented, but the algorithm's that smart. So like you're saying, that's a great tip. 
to get your content out to people who engage with it, like doing it and breaking things down smaller. And we know I was actually just like reading an article yesterday about like TikTok and watch time and all of that. And like, what makes a video go viral? And it is, you know, watch time is the biggest thing. So if you can get people to watch, you know, a 75% of your video, or even, um, you know, loop it where it starts over at the beginning, that is like the biggest thing that is going to help you go viral and to help your content do better. So the shorter that you can make your videos, that's what's actually going to help that all, you know, actually happen so that you can kind of create that virality. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I usually suggest, you know, for me, I suggest my clients, I'm like one out of every five could be like a longer uh, video, you know, on TikTok, you can do up to 10 minutes now. Right. Um, and it makes sense. So my, my thought process with all of this is when you're creating this messaging and Molly, I'm not, I'm not sure how you direct everyone, but I think everyone like, think of the big video, think of the long video first, do the YouTube video first. Mm -hmm. And then take that video and break down those clips. So yeah. when you're structuring it, that's really the best way to think about the messaging so that you could break it down into 10 different video clips or well, maybe possibly more, um, you know, for that. So um, Michelle's like, oh, hey, I'm just now able to hop on. She's going to listen to the replay. Awesome. Yeah, Michelle, um, Molly dropped some really valuable tips. So I hope you get to go back and look at that. And I'll say hi to um, also Michelle Lynn Hardson, who's one of my clients. I love dearly one of my friends. Um, and I definitely like for us to do an audit, um, not today, but I'd like to take a deep dive because she is helping women um, learn how to invest that don't have a clue. And so I really want to help her get a lot further with what she's doing as well. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, when it comes to your message and, and trying to, um, like pare it down so that it is a shorter video. I was just creating content yesterday and going through and, you know, you write, I, I script everything that I do. So that helps. And then I go through and I'm like, is this filler? Am I saying anything important? You know, is this the meat and potatoes of what I want to say? Or am I just kind of like making a point? And, you know, the more of that that you can pull out, the better, because if you TikTok, Instagram, all of these sites are rewarding original content, they're what you're saying, and I actually just did a video on this, like what you're saying is new and different and original when you add your own spin to it, your own experiences to it, your own story. But it's your ability to take that information and simplify it down. That is what's going to have people want to pay attention to how you're saying it, because there's never not an abundance of information on whatever it is that you're trying to do. But it's that kind of like, simplicity piece of it where you're just overwhelmed. You don't know how to take it and put it into action. So if you want to be somebody that stands out with your messaging and what you're talking about, you have to be able to do that in a very simple way that people can just hear what you're saying and say, Oh, okay. All I have to do is this. I have to cut out the extra fluff of what I'm saying in content. Great. I'm going to go implement it. So no matter what you're saying, find a way to simplify it. And that's really going to make a massive difference. Love it. Love it. All right. Do we have time? So <clears throat> just to kind of let everyone know, depending on your favorite platforms, we go live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube simultaneously. Thank you to StreamYard for that. And then um, we're going to hop over to TikTok. So every day, so at 1235, we'll go live on TikTok. And then we're actually going to hop over to Instagram live. So we just hit everything on Tuesdays, but whatever your favorite platform is, um, you can jump on those with us on Tuesdays. And um, we are going to, at some point, even possibly jump into kind of bringing you up as a guest and asking you questions and looking at your content. Um, so I think we have time, you know, right now to do one more, prob probably. Yep. Let me share this tab. Nikki was like, oh, great idea. So, it's, and for all of you that are on right now, once again, Molly and I will be doing a very small, small focus group, about 10 of you. Um, taking you through the process that we're doing today. So we're going to go in and audit your current content. What type of messaging? What do you want to say? Who do you want to attract? We're going to help you create the whole blueprint framework for that so that you'll be able to take what we teach you and start applying it all the time into. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you comment VIP so that we know to reach out to you to get that information. Awesome. Okay. Brandy, can you? Okay, cool. Um, so I pulled up Shine Yoga, who was um, one of the other lovely ladies who. That's Casey. Casey. Yeah. So 
Um, okay, so in looking at her account, I actually had a couple of ideas. So um, when I look at her bio, we meet people where they are and move with them to better well-being through movement and breath, come as you are and shine as you go. So I would love to see, especially because this is a brick and mortar business, I want to know where you are. I want some location information. I want, you know, uh, like a directive to the schedule, which is linked there, but like come join us as a, in a class or class schedule below, something like that, so that um, people can see and understand and know that that's the goal of coming to this account is to go sign up and join us for a class. Um, when I was looking at, so I looked at her, um, her highlights here. And so she just had a couple of highlights on classes, but if I was going to decide, do I want to be uh, you know, a client of this yoga studio, if I was clicking on this classes, what I would love to see there would be a description of the class, a clip of people in the class so I could get an idea of the vibe. Is this more of a vinyasa flow? Is this more yin? Is this more low key? Like, what does it look like? Because that's really what I'm buying into. Um, and kind of along that same vein, I would love to see more of kind of like the studio. So when I go through this account, um, there's some great stuff. But what I'm wondering is, again, if I'm deciding to take classes at the studio, what does the studio look like? Is this Casey's account or is this the studio account? Because I think the line's a little bit blurry in terms of like, is it a personal account or is it a business account? And I'm always 100% for showing faces. So when we look at her reels and kind of go through and see which ones of her reels did really well. There were these two down here that were kind of just like fun trend ones, but we've got like 3,500 on this one and 1850 on this one. And the, um, the only thing is that they start very close up of her face. So it's like people want to see faces. That's the thing that truly is going to like draw someone in. So I'm not opposed to that, but just getting like, really clear on you know the best way to do that so is casey going to be the face of the brand or um there was a post in here let me see if i can find which one was this one um you know this one got 53 likes it got some comments because again we see faces we see people this feels more on brand for a yoga studio i'm seeing women that i'm like oh i want to work out with these women they seem like my vibe this place seems like my vibe i like the quote on the wall like all of these things um are giving me just like little pieces of who this brand is and more information that's letting me know is this someone that I want to engage with more or not? Um, even like the, the caption on this is great. Like you give information about like how you can go take class with Emma Kate, um, all of that kind of stuff. And then, you know, we look at some of the other stuff and there's some great stories and things like that, that she tells in some of her captions. Um, but I would love to be really strategic with, the visuals and the captions and then how those things relate to her brand like how these things are either convincing people to go take a class at the studio or enhancing their life in some way i think um i think being really strategic with the types of things that you want to showcase would be really helpful with this account um because it feels a little bit more reactive in the sense of like, oh, this happened. Let me take a picture and put this up versus proactive with a strategy. I want to pull more people in. I want to show people uh, we have an event coming up and I want to prime my audience so that they'll sign up for it. So I think really having uh, a structure and a strategy here would help people really understand more about the studio, let them know, okay, this is a studio that I want to be a part of because I love like the experience and the vibe and all of those things, because, you know, you want to create um, kind of a moment where someone's like, Ooh, I want to do that. So the more that you can showcase like the energy of the studio, what people are doing and make them want to join that community, the better. And so I think that's kind of a little bit of a missing piece here. Brandy, do you have anything to add to that? 
Yeah. So my heart goes out to anyone that has a brick and mortar, especially in fitness and wellness, because, you know, that's my background. I spent 17 years as a you know trainer, nutritionist, and um, I failed miserably when I had my studio because of a lot of the things that we're talking about today. And of course, the back, you know, back end of the things. But the biggest thing, um, you know, disservice that you can do if you own a brick and mortar and you want people to pick up the phone and call, you walk in your door, sign up for your classes, you know, no matter what is restaurant, gym, yoga studio, massage therapy. The thing is, is where are you located? So every time you post, you need to be using your location option, your geolocation option, um, you know, tagging the city, using the hashtags. I know I know you're going to hear information where people say hashtags are dead, but you're telling the algorithm who to show your stuff to. So I don't care. Use them anyway. Um, and the thing is, is that especially like with her, I believe she's in Virginia Beach. So I would use a lot of the Virginia Beach um, local hashtag options and I would use what we call UGC. Right. So I would create some sort of content challenge contest something with everyone that's coming to the studio and say hey if you do a short little video and you check in and tag us you're going to get a point every time and when you get 10 points 20 points whatever they get a you know some merchandise i i don't know you know that's another conversation but give everyone a reason to check in to tag you to talk about you because you you want people coming to you and us seeing their faces and actually seeing all the people like the post you show with the five women lined up i would like to see more of that um, when you're creating the content and um you know just people hear yoga sometimes they're very intimidated and we all need it i mean yoga is just sitting and breathing right it, we don't have to be able to bend into a pretzel and so I'd like to see more educational options on why you should come to us. And those, once again, those short little videos or short little posts, maybe you're in a simple pose and you're like, this is what this pose can do for you. Because I don't really, I don't get a lot of yoga out of this particular, you know, when I look at the gallery, I don't, I don't really get a lot of, yo of uh, yoga feel, yoga studio feel. So definitely um, I would go for the UGC content, make sure you're adding um, information, use that. SEO option. So especially if you're posting to TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, make sure you're saying Virginia Beach occasionally. Make sure you're using local, you know, uh, vibes and words and keywords so that people know that that's where you are. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say like along with UGC also something you may have more control over is having your instructors tag themselves, tag the studio and leverage their own audiences, especially if yeah. the instructors going to multiple places i know with my yoga studio i have one instructor who teaches at multiple places so she's kind of like always tagging them and sharing and that's just a great way um to do that as well yeah love it love it awesome. okay so, so we're sitting at like i don't know if anybody watching has a specific question we'd love for you to ask those now even if you're watching this as a replay we will go back and make sure we get notified so we we will come back and answer those um, we're not, we don't really have enough time to cover a lot more. Um, but speaking and while we're waiting on a few people, maybe to ask questions, Molly, I would say, you know, when they're, when they're really want to reach their ideal client, when they're starting to write messaging and they want to reach that ideal client, what are three things that you could tell them they should be doing, or maybe that they should not be doing that could be hurting their content? So I would say like the most important thing, um, and especially kind of with the two accounts that we just looked at, really looking at um, what is that person feeling? Like, what is that person struggling with? What are they feeling? You have to mirror that back to them. So if it's yoga, it's like, I know that you're stressed and you feel like your life is too busy to do yoga. That's why you need to do it. And here's what the benefits of that will be. You know, if it's the money stuff, it's like, I know you're feeling like you just can't get ahead and, you know, you're getting buried under your bills and you want to be able to create wealth so that your kids don't have this same feeling. I can help. It's like when you do that, someone's like, oh my gosh, like that's exactly how I feel. That's exactly what I want. And that's going to make people magnetize to you and to what you're saying. And I think a lot of times it's just easy to hide behind like, a pretty picture or some factoids or whatever, instead of really like going in and getting super clear on what that emotional messaging is. But that's when people are going to be like, 
I don't even care if they know their stuff as much as they understand my problem. Therefore, they can solve it. That's actually going to do more to get people to want to work with you than just you spouting off a bunch of information that's not really grounded in something energetically, you know, connecting. Yeah. And I'll say, you know, I, I, I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit of the hypocrite because I used to do all the pretty, make everything match on, on my personal profile. And, and then I, a lot of, you know, my personality and I was fine, like, screw it. I'm going all in. I'm just going to talk about that. I got to that place to understand. I got to the place where I was like, I want to talk about the things that are important. And, but I stick in three little pockets. Obviously I talk about the hilarious of being single, you know, over 40, because that's kind of crazy. I, I, I obviously hit systems and all the different systems that you could have. And then I still drop my truth bombs. I've been doing that for years. Um, I do that because it's, it's like things I wish people had said to me when I was failing at business. And so I think, I think become known for something. Maybe mm -hmm. you don't have to be known for three things, but that's the other thing too, is like, why are people going to keep coming back to you? It's not because you own a yoga studio right? It's not because like with Michelle, it's like not because you can um, get them out of debt. There's a lot of people that can get them out of debt. There's a lot of people that can help them with their budget. Why do you want them to keep coming back to you? That's what you have to remember. Cause I will say one thing that I'm, I, I hate for a lot of you is you go and you buy into these courses and they give you these cookie cutter kind of boxed in, like create your content this way and understand that they're, they're telling you to do it the way that it worked for them. It does not mean it will work for you. That's a good so point. <laughs> the found, yeah, the foundation's good, blueprint's good. Um, you know, that those frameworks, but oh, the reverb is horrible. Sorry. Just trying to cut that a little bit. Um, but I just, you know, that's my main thing is like at the end of the day, some of you could look great with the curated, really super pretty, awesome stuff, high production. If that fits your brand, great. But don't feel like you need to hold back because you don't have that. You're gonna figure it out, look at your numbers, pay attention to who's engaging, who's liking. I, my goal is to get a lot of DMs. I don't necessarily worry about comments and likes. I want people to get into my DM and DM me a certain specific word and then get into that conversation. Right, right. Great point. All right. So I think we're time up. We're going to head over, go live on TikTok, and then later we'll be on Instagram. We'll be back next Tuesday again. Um, next Tuesday, we're going to be talking about how to really craft a, a, an offer. Um, and I, you know, sold this from Alex Hermosi because I love it, but it's like make them an offer that they would feel stupid saying no to, you know, creating the value, adding the offer, doing a value stack, um, knowing what the proposition value is. So we're going to talk about all of those things next Tuesday. So until then, you guys have a kick-ass week and we will see you then. Awesome. Bye guys.